some sunscreens, and a bunch of other beauty products that I have finished up. Keep watching. All right, so I'm gonna put this into categories and I'll put the timestamps in the description box, but you know, make sure you watch the full video. Um, but wanted to give a couple of like uh, disclaimers here in the beginning. So one, just because I used a product up and you'll see in, you know, when I talk about this in the video, doesn't mean that I actually loved it. Um, two, just because I did not finish a product doesn't mean that it's not good because some products are like almost impossible to finish. <laughs> and because of the nature of what I do for a living, you know, talking about beauty here, there and everywhere, um, sometimes I have so much stuff that comes in that it's impossible to finish one particular category. So there's that. Um, but other than that, I think that's enough of the disclaiming. So let's get into it. Oh, and also I didn't finish these all at the same time. I tend to save the empties so that I can film videos like this. So now I'm done with the disclaiming. Okay, so <laughs> sunscreens. Now sunscreen is definitely a category that I can finish up pretty quickly, especially body sunscreens, you know, we're covering a lot of surface area and you know, we don't want to make, make sure we don't miss anything. So I can go through sunscreens relatively quickly, which is exactly why I don't like to spend a ton of money on sunscreen. Like I sometimes even buy the two for five at Walgreens, CVS, you know, store brand, whatever, Target store brand. Like I'm, I'm really easy when it comes to sunscreen. I don't have any irritations towards any chemical slash organic UV filters. So I can use things with avabenzone, oxabenzone, you know, all that, right? So that's what a majority of these are. A lot of these are PR things. Some things I bought myself. Um, I'm not always gonna remember which ones are like PR and whatnot, but I'll do my best to call them out. Um, these little Roche Posay ones, I believe were P all PR. Um, I finished off the Anthelios Dermo Kids Gentle Sunscreen SPF 60. Um, I would say this is, you can use this on your face and body. This was too heavy for my face, but you know, perfect for my body, especially in the winter time. I found that this to be very creamy and you know, nice on the skin in the winter. Um, sometimes in the winter time though, I would put a moisturizer on first. You know, as soon as I get into the shower where my skin's a little bit damp, I'll put a moisturizer on first wait a couple minutes and then I'll put sunscreen on because sometimes in the winter time like my skin can get really dry and cracked and I want to you know just protect that. Another La Roche-Posay the Anthelio 60 Melton Sunscreen Milk. Um, this was something that I liked in the, in the summertime, the warmer months. Um, I didn't use it on my face. This was you know mostly for the body. It says it's a fast absorbing velvet finish. I'm not very picky when it comes to a body sunscreen as long as that mess doesn't make me look ashy and it doesn't cost a ton of money, I'm usually okay with it, so I saw no issue with this sunscreen. Yet another La Roche-Posay, this is the Anthelio 60 Cooling Water Lotion Sunscreen. So similar to the last one, except this one had like a cooling effect to it. Um, it you could use this on face and body, I only used it on body. Um, this was really nice, especially the little cooling kind of feel afterwards. You know, nothing really crazy to write home about, but you know, it's pretty decent. Would I buy any of these La Roche-Posay sunscreens again? Um, probably not, only because like I said, I don't, I'm not really particular with the sunscreens that I use on my body. I usually just get, get what's on sale. If it was on sale, perhaps, but otherwise, you know, <laughs> I'll go for the generic. Now, one good thing about all three of those La Roche-Posay sunscreens were that they were all water resistant up to 80 minutes. That's something I do tend to look for in, you know, a sunscreen for the summer, cause you know, you're sweating and stuff like that. Um, but water resistant is a key word in up to 80 minutes. <laughs> so, you know, you definitely want to reapply every two hours while you're out. Because things like, you know, sweat, oil, the gunk outside, those are things that can help to kind of like break down the sunscreen. So the more you're outside, the, the more you want to make sure that you're on it with reapplying every two hours. Um, now, obviously, we're going to use common sense. So if you dip in the pool or in the beach or, I don't know, you walk down the street and the fire hydrants open and psh, you get wet, obviously, you're going to towel off, you know, and put sunscreen on again, you know? Water resistant, not waterproof. No sunscreen is waterproof. Now, 
as I was mentioning, you know, generics. This is a generic sunscreen that I actually wound up liking. Um, this is the Walgreens SPF 50 Sport. This is something that I'm more than likely sure that I got two for five or if I just bought one, it was at most $2.99. Um, this is oxybenzone free, paraben free. I didn't pick it up because it was oxybenzone free. I don't, I personally don't have issues with oxybenzone, but for those who are typically, you know, irritated by some of the chemical slash organic um, filters, sometimes oxybenzone and sometimes abibenzone or maybe even both are usually the culprit. Um, this is water resistant up to 80 minutes as well. Like I said, nothing really crazy to write home about. Uh, I can be so basic when it comes to a body sunscreen. And it's basically because like, you know, if I want to glow or something, I have those kind of like, like the Kroger sunscreen oil. Uh, you know, if I'm doing a photo, you know, have a photo shoot or something like that. But for day to day, I go through a, a body sunscreen so quickly. It doesn't make sense for me to spend, you know, a ton of money. But because, you know, not everyone is a, is a miser like me. Some people actually like products that, you know, do things. So I do try lots of different sunscreens. So another one, if I'm not buying generic, I'm buying drugstore. And Neutrogena makes some really amazing drugstore sunscreens. The Beach Defense is probably one of my faves. This one was the SPF 70. It's water resistant up to 80 minutes. Um, I like the smell on this one. It's like a really, I don't know if I can still smell it because it's, no, you can't really smell it. But I remember this having a really nice smell and those are things that, you know, would actually kind of draw me to <laughs> spending maybe $3 more on a sunscreen. Okay, next, the Black Girl sunscreen. This is the original one. This is the SPF 30. Um, this is also water resistant up to 80 minutes. It's oxybenzone and oxynoxate free. It's also fragrance free. So if you're someone who, you know, maybe in the past chemical sunscreens made you a little irritated, um, and if avabenzone is not the filter that made you irritated, you might want to check this one out. Um, and the fact that it's fragrance free fragrance for some people with sensitive skin tends to be that irritant. Um, so maybe, you know, take a look at that one. Now with that particular sunscreen, I only used it on my body. I felt it was too heavy for my face. If you have a drier skin type, that might be great for both face and body. The only caveat I have to say about this one is that because you can use it on the body, I do wish that they had bigger bottles um, because otherwise, like, I would just have to keep buying this, you know, keep buying it and buying it and buying it. Um, so I would, I would hope maybe in the future they'll come out with like maybe bigger bottles for body sunscreen, but this was, this was nice. These two were sent in, P I think these were sent in PR. Maybe I bought one and maybe one was sent in PR, but I remember Sunbum sending a PR package, but I also remember buying some Sunbum, which was which, I don't remember. <laughs> but this is the SPF 50, water resistant up to 80 minutes, gluten free and vegan. I mean, it wasn't much to write about. I think this one had a coconut smell. Yes. I, I don't typically like things that smell like coconut, but this was nice. Um, and then this is just um, a spray version, SPF 50 as well, water resistant up to 80 minutes as well. Um, you know, with the spray sunscreens, you know, you spray them on your body and then you, you know, make sure that you massage it into your skin so you're not missing any places. Um, even better, you can spray it into your hand and then apply it to your body. If, if you're going to apply this to your face, this is not what you want to do. <laughs> you want to spray it in your hand and then apply it to your face um, because you just want to make sure that you're getting a nice even coating with these sunscreen sprays. You know, sometimes the spray can get everywhere but where it needs to go or you may grossly underestimate how much sunscreen actually hit your body um, and then you're not protected enough. So it's better to kind of spray it in your hand and then apply it to your body. So, so now this one is a spatial sunscreen, one of my favorites from when it first came out, but Olay discontinued it. Ah. Um, this is the Olay Sun Facial Sunscreen plus Antioxidants SPF 35. This is a shine control. That is what I really loved about this. This was a sunscreen that I could wear mostly, not even mostly, I definitely could wear that year round. During the warmer months, I could wear it on its own and it did a good job of controlling, like it did a good job of controlling shine, but it was also great as like a makeup primer. Um, in the colder months, I wore, uh, I, depending on how cold it got, I could wear it on its own. But like when it was like really cold and dry, I would put a moisturizer on, give that a couple minutes and then put suns that sunscreen on top and it just worked so well all throughout the year. I don't know why it got discontinued, 
I mean, I could have many like speculations about why I got discontinued, but I, I just really don't know. So I don't, I don't have it here. It's in the bathroom. I feel like getting up. So I'm gonna just put a picture up here. Um, Olay says that if you love that one, the Olay Regenerous Whip SVF 25 um, is a good alternative. Um, you get a little bit, a little bit of a blurring action, just like a little tiny bit. The regular whips without the SVF 25 definitely has more of the blurring action, um, but. You can get a little blurring with the SPF version. Um, and it does have something where it can kind of control oil. It just doesn't like, you know, blatantly say it's a, a shine control like that one did. Now some skincare stuff. So now I've gone through two Ulla Henriksen Truth Juice Daily Cleansers. I really like this. The only reason why I don't keep using this cleanser is because I, at one point I was like, girl, when you talk about your routine, you gotta have other products to talk about. <laughs> so I started to use other things to kind of like have more products to talk about. So otherwise I would still kind of, and a matter of fact, there, there is a bottle of that in my shower right now. It's just that I have other cleansers, you know, in the rotation. Um, the Mario Badescu Glycolic Foaming Cleanser. Mario Badescu gets a lot of bad, um, you know, bad rap on, online. Um, now the thing is, I haven't tried every single Mario Badescu product. Um, there are a lot of products that I've tried that don't work for me. Um, I do like that glycolic foaming cleanser. I haven't used the glycolic foaming cleanser in a while because my lifestyle changed. I'm not really going out as much. I'm not wearing makeup as much as I did when, you know, I was going out. Um, and then when I do have makeup on, it's maybe for a day and then I film like all, all the stuff that I need to film. Um, but I like that one before when my lifestyle was a little bit different. I would use that maybe like once or twice a week to kind of like deep clean. So like if I was going out a lot, I'm sweating, I'm wearing a lot of makeup, all the environmental gunk and all that other stuff, I would use that maybe like once or twice a week to kind of like deep clean. But um, once that was done, I had another one that I have in the shower, but I don't really use it that often. Um, another cleansing product, the Bosha Breakup, Makeup Breakup Cleansing Oil. This has been a long time fave. There are a lot of cleansing oils out there, um, but for me, I, it, the texture's gotta be right. Like this felt like, like I like a cleansing oil to feel a little bit on the thicker side, um, but also it's gotta have enough slip where, you know, the makeup can easily come off. I've tried some cleansing oils where it was like, well, damn, you want me to like ruin my skin trying to get this off? Like this is too much here. So definitely like that one. This is an empty of a product that I didn't even like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is the Ulla Henriksen Lemonade. I'm not gonna say I didn't like it. I'll, well, you'll hear. So this is the Lemonade Smoothing Scrub. Um, it says that it can be used on the face and body. Um, I found this to be too rough for my face, but not like substantial enough for my body. Um, but I did wind up liking the smell. Like it had like a nice lemony smell to it. So I would kind of use it like underneath my arms and, and whatnot. Um, but the fact that I finished it up so quickly also is a testament to how much I didn't like it <laughs> as a product. Cause like, dang, this went by so fast and it's so expensive. Um, so this is an empty of something where I was just like, eh, I wouldn't buy it again or I wouldn't have bought it in the first place cause this was sent in PR. Another Olay empty of a product that they discontinued. This was their Micellar Water from the Luminous line. Micellar Water is, there's, you're not gonna be that groundbreaking when it comes to a Micellar Water. I feel like they're, you try one, you've tried them all. Um, but what I liked about this one is that it had the pump, so it wasn't as messy and the you know, packaging was really pretty. The way I use a Micellar Water is like, I'll, if I'm wearing makeup, you know, I'll double cleanse, cleansing oil, regular cleanser. And then like, especially if I'm like trying to protect some sort of like slick down hairstyle or if like I'm wearing my hair straight. I haven't worn my hair straight in, but you know, when I did wear my hair, my own natural hair straight, um, you know, you don't want to be splashing water and then reverting your hair. So I would use a micellar water like this, um, drenched in the cotton pad and then kind of, you know, more controlled movement, but. They discontinued this, but not before I was able to get a couple more. So I actually have, I think maybe two more bottles left. And <laughs> this, I don't, I think this is a sample size, a travel size, but I definitely didn't buy it. This is something that came in PR. I think it was like a, a, like some deluxe travel things that came in like a cute little like travel PR kind of thing. Um, but this is the Ulla Henriksen 
counterbalance oil control hydrator. I really like this. So if you're someone with oily skin and you looking to, you know, hydrate your skin without it being extremely like greasy or heavier weighed down, you know, a product like this, they're not the only ones who make a product like this, but this is just one that I happen to have tried. It's gonna hydrate the skin really well without feeling heavy because oily skin still needs to be hydrated and you still need to moisturize. And sometimes you can hydrate and moisturize all in the same product, but I like this one quite nicely and it's all used up. Another Ulla Henriksen, this is probably either my, my bad y'all, my cat is, <laughs> Cat Williams is funny. I forgot to close my office door next door. Um, it's a mess in there. There's a whole bunch of products all over the place. I, I need to straighten up and, and, and just fix up in there, right? But he went and jumped on the, dre the, the table where the, all the products were to create a diversion <laughs> because he knocked over the products. I heard the products fall. I go to see what happened and he used that as an opportunity to run in here. <laughs> and then he ran underneath my bed into the middle of the bed where I couldn't get him. And now he's sitting on my windowsill, but I'm pretty sure if I went to try to go get him and kick him out, he's gonna run underneath the bed again. Anyway, Ola Henriksen <laughs> Banana Bright Serum. This is a vitamin C serum that I actually really liked. It's not going to contain L-ascorbic acid. I think it's a derivative. It was fine enough for me. I know some people like, you know, I want the, the L-ascorbic acid. As a matter of fact, if you wanna know more information on that, there's a vitamin C for black skin. Uh, video that I did with esthetician Deja Ayadeli. Make sure to check that out. I'll link it above and below. This was just fine for me and my second one that I used up. Right now, I'm using the Hyper Skin Vitamin C Serum because again, like I was like, girl, you gotta put other stuff in your routine so you can <laughs> have more things to talk about than the same old, same old all the time. So there's that. Another skincare product, the Pharmacy Daily Greens Oil-Free Gel Moisturizer. So similar to the Ulla Henriksen one that I told you is like great for oily skin, it hydrates without feeling heavy. Same thing with this. This one has more of like that cool gel. Like it feels thicker than the Ulla Henriksen, but it still has that very lightweight feel to it. So both I like for oily skin. And then, you know, during the day, you just put your sunscreen on top of it. The Ola Henriksen, I would say that I would only use in the warmer months, whereas the pharmacy, I could get away with like in the fall, the spring, maybe sometimes in the winter, but in the dead of winter, I might need a little bit, you know, just a little bit more. But the Ola Henriksen, definitely something that I would wear <laughs> only when it's like warmer out. Now, some body moisturizers and body washes. Now, I would have a lot more of these here because those are also products that I tend to go through pretty quickly, but I've been buying a bunch of other body lotions, washes, and stuff like that for a body skincare video that should be coming out pretty soon. I picked up this Necessaire uh, body lotion. It's fragrance free. I picked this up because one of my influencer friends was doing an ad with it, and I was like, oh, that looks good. And plus, you know, I'm supporting her at the same time too, so you kill two birds with one stone. But I didn't love this. I just felt like, I don't mind fragrance in my body lotions, as long as I actually like the fragrance, you know, like the fragrance has to be pleasing to me. But I just felt like this was just like, just okay. And I would probably never spend as much on a body lotion <laughs> as much as I spent on this again. So it was just like, eh. I finished it, but eh. Now some other body moisturizers, um, both from Aveeno. This one is the Skin Relief Moisturizing Lotion. This is fragrance free. I like this one. Nice big bottle, nice good price. The skin on my body in the winter time can get very dry and itchy if I'm not careful. So I always make sure that, you know, one, I'm taking a lukewarm shower, lukewarm, which means not hot and not cold. I don't know why people think lukewarm means cold, but a lot of people don't want to give up them hot showers, but I'm telling you, man, okay. So what I do, take a lukewarm shower, and when I get out the shower, I dampen my, you know, dry my skin off, but while my skin is still a little bit damp, I'll put like this or I'll put this on. To be honest with you, I don't really remember that huge of a difference in using either one of these. I like them both. There is a bit of a difference in ingredients. Like this one has the triple oat complex and this one has a prebiotic oat concentrate. So maybe there's like a little difference in the oats here. This one also has uh, pro vitamin B5 panthenol, which is very moisturizing. Aloe, which helps to soothe skin. So I guess maybe there's like a slight, this one also has shea butter. So I guess I think a slight difference in ingredients, but to be honest, I don't remember that much of a difference other than they both were really good on my skin. 
They were lightweight lotions, but like, you know, I felt like it moisturized me in a way that like almost like a body butter might without the um, extra feel and, and heaviness. Also from Advino, the Skin Relief Body Wash. This was coconut scented. I usually don't like coconut scented things, but this was okay. It wasn't so like, like, like crazy. This is also something for like itchy dry skin. I liked it. It wasn't anything where it was like, wow. But, you know, I would definitely love something like this more than, you know, some pricey, smelly, you know, juvenile body wash. My body wash needs to keep my skin soothing. He wanted to say hi, or maybe not, because he's not giving y'all no eye contact. <laughs> he's like, put me down now, immediately. Because some, some body washes can have like a lot of fragrance and a lot of like stuff in it that dries the skin out. And that's not always a really good feeling. And then some body washes can be like too like dermatologist office where it almost feels like a lotion, but in the shower and then it's just like, ugh. So this I felt was like a nice medium of something that was like sensorially <laughs> pleasing, but still having the right kind of stuff in it where it wouldn't dry out my skin. And then the last body product, this Amethyst body polish from Herbivore. This was really pretty and I loved what it did with my skin, but this mess smelled like curl juice. Like, <laughs> like why I gotta smell like that? Like, I would like, ooh. I wish I could have put something in there to like, I don't know, I wouldn't buy it again, but it was pretty, it felt good on my skin. If they come out with one that has like, maybe like a vanilla scent or shea butter scent or something like that, I'd, I'd consider buying it again. It's more than what I would typically spend on a body product, but it was nice, but woo, gave me flashbacks of like 87. All right, next up, makeup. No. <laughs> some of this got a little messy because some stuff busted open, but I will try my best to kind of show you something real quick and then <laughs> throw it back in the bag so I don't make a mess of things here. 10 <laughs> empty containers of the Ulta Juice Infused Lip Oil. Like that is my, that is one of my faves for my lips. I use it before I go to bed so that my lips are moisturized. I use it in the morning before I apply my makeup, like kind of like condition my lip and then maybe I'll blot some of it off. Or maybe I'll leave it on. If I'm wearing a gloss, I'll leave it on and just put it over the gloss. But if I'm wearing, it's very rare that I've worn like a matte lipstick, but if I were going to, I would take the lip oil off and then put the matte so it's not affecting the texture. Another one where, another makeup item where I have multiples here, five of them here, and then this is from a different brand, but I've got five of these L'Oreal Brow Definer Stylist Pencils. I use the shade, this is brunette. They have a brunette and then they have a dark brunette. Dark brunette is like a little bit too dark for me, but I like the brunette. This is a dupe of the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. I like this better because I can get two of these pencils for less than the price of one Anastasia Brow Wiz. And I like that it gives you like those really nice brow hair, like it mimics the brow hairs. Sephora also had a retractable brow pencil. The shade is chocolate brown and these are waterproof. So this was very similar to this, you know, another Anastasia Brow Wiz dupe that was, you know, less expensive. Very nice. I do think that the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer is um, less expensive. Plus, you can get these buy one, get one half off pretty often, either at Ulta, Walgreens, you know, wherever the drugstore makeup usually is. You can usually find like a buy one, get one half off. But watch the prices, because I've noticed sometimes that like when Ulta does a buy one, get one half off, if I go and look at the price of the product at Target, sometimes if Target's not having a sale, it's still cheaper if you buy two at Target for the full price than if you buy one, get one half off at Ulta. So just watch the pricing on drugstore makeup. I'm, it's funny that I put this in the empties. This is the little bud of the Urban Decay Perversion 24-7 Glide-On Pencil that I love. I have so many like little itty bitty things of these like little buds where I'm like, Okay, it's probably too small for me to be using, but I still wanna kinda get my money's worth. So I actually probably have like a colony of like maybe 12 little like little minis. That, that's really funny, but that's the one that actually made it to the empty bag. Then for some empty complexion products, the Dior, this is not a surprise if you've you know listened to me a lot over the years, but the Dior Forever Matte Foundation, I wear shade 6.5N. This is one of my favorite foundations, something I can wear year round. It has a beautiful satin matte finish. 
The color match is great. It looks great on my skin. It's like a medium coverage. So I, you know, it evens out my skin pretty well. You know, of course I still need to use concealer underneath my eyes, um, but that's great. Speaking of concealer, this Estee Lauder Double Wear Radiant Concealer in shade 6C. This is a beautiful under eye concealer. I would say that the, the formula is very similar in um, finish as the Dior, but obviously since it's a concealer, it has more coverage, so that works beautifully together. And this works beautifully with most of the foundation um, and complexion products that I like to wear. And then from Bobbi Brown, two of the golden creamy concealers. They don't even come in these pots anymore. <laughs> like you can't get a Bobbi Brown concealer, regular concealer, I think only their correctors come in the pots like this. Now you gotta get it with the powder and the powder, like what is that powder, Bobby Brown? It doesn't match, like, well, maybe it matches for some people, but it don't match for me. So I wind up not using the powder, so I have this big, well, it's not that big, it's maybe like this big. <laughs> but I have this side of make this makeup where I'm not using one side, it just seems so wasteful to me. But I finished two of those. All right, so the last bit is a bunch of hair products. I'll kind of quickly go through them because they all essentially kind of do the same thing. So from the Pantene Gold line, you know, I've loved this line a lot since it first came out. So I finished the Moisture Boost Shampoo, the Leave-On Detangling Milk, and two repairing masks, which makes sense because these are usually my, you know, staple products that I like to use pretty often. I like this line, it's very moisturizing. And I like that it's not extremely expensive. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Listen, you know, I, it's his world. I just paid her in here. <laughs> anyway, so I like this line. This that I love the smell. I like hair products that smell good. It's not expensive. It moisturizes my hair really well. I have 4C natural hair. But I also still like the um, Pantene has a moisture. What is it called? I don't know if it's called Moisture Renewal, but it's, it's some deep moisture or something like that. But it comes in these huge bottles. That works really well for me also. I would use like the shampoo and the conditioner from that line and then use like the maintenance products like the leave-in and whatnot from the gold line. But good stuff and not, not expensive. And then from the Main Choice, which is another hair care brand that I like. This is from the Fro the Culture line. I like this line, like I said, I like hair products that smell good and that are really nice and moisturizing for my 4C hair. So I finished up the shampoo, the conditioner, and a mask. There's also another product from this line that I absolutely love. Now, I already said that I wasn't combing my hair much in 2021, but when I used to actually like, you know, do some hairstyles and stuff, Ooh, I wonder if I remember how to do a twist out. <laughs> but there's a gel, like a buttery gel from this line. That stuff is freaking amazing for twist outs, braid outs, you know, any kind of those like set styles. It gives the hair lots of a good hold. The hair doesn't feel crunchy. It's not flaky. It doesn't feel dry and it gives it a good hold. So I could put this in like my twists. I, I, I mostly, when I'm doing it myself, mostly will do a twist out because I ain't gonna lie to you, braiding sometimes can be a challenge sometimes, especially when I'm trying to like, my arms get a little tired and I'm just like, ah, I give up. Whereas a twist, I can kind of keep my arms down like this and just get it done. Um, but I could have like, I don't remember how long, like I would say maybe th day three, day four, day five air with that gel. So that's a good one too. Um, and a little goes a long way. So I, I don't think I've finished one of those yet, but that's also a nice one that I like from this line. Also from Main Choice, Prickly Pear Paradise uh, Apply to Dry Overnight Mask. I like this. I wouldn't buy it again though, because I, you know, just the, my lifestyle now, I'm like, I'm not really combing my hair. My hair <laughs> stays in braids and then, I won't get it washed, deep conditioned, and trimmed, and then braided again, and then rinse, wash, rinse, repeat. You know, I don't have a need to use this again, but I, I liked it. And then this was the pre poo from the Heavenly Halo line. This might have been something that I got in PR, whereas everything else I just bought myself. I liked it, but like I wouldn't buy it again because like I use regular like like a Pantene conditioner or something like that as a pre poo before, you know, condition my hair, rinse it out and then shampoo my hair. Something else that I really like, I'm, I probably threw away the other bottles by accident because I know I finished like a couple of the, um, so this is the Olaplex number four bond maintenance shampoo. So I would use this in line with the, the I would use the Olaplex number three, the number four, um, and the 
I think the five and six, I can't remember. But three is like a treatment product. Um, I got introduced to it from my hairstylist, Gabrielle Corny. Um, I'll leave her information below. The number three, I know I for sure have at least like maybe two or three empties. Um, but I probably accidentally threw them in the garbage. The Bond shampoo I like. I haven't used it in a while though, because like I said, my hair stays in the braids. I go to the salon, whatever she uses to wash my hair and you know, her secret sauce deep conditioner, I, you know, like she uses that. And I, you get a trim and you braid the hair down again. <laughs> Last but not least, um, I also finished from Head and Shoulders, the line for the blacks, <laughs> the Daily Moisture Scalp Cream. This stuff, this stuff is amazing. This was created with black scientists, black hair stylists. Um, I actually, this was um, something that I've worked on campaigns on before. And I actually got to go to the PNG headquarters to meet some of the people on the team that actually created this line. And not only did they have black people who helped to actually create the line, they also had black people on like the marketing team to you know come up with the concepts for the marketing and whatnot. So I was just like, oh, look at all black all up and through. Now the reason why this is great, now a lot of like scalp products will be like, you know, here, throw this oil on your itchy scalp or your dandruff and you'll be fine, right? And those things t tend to give you like a temporary solution that can actually make the situation worse. So while this does have oils in it, obviously, um, it also has an active ingredient of, um, I'll just say ZPT because the full name is like Perinth Perinthione Zinc. Um, I'll put it, I'll link it below so you can like, if you want to look it up, you can look it up. But that is an active ingredient that helps to fight dandruff. A lot of times we think, oh, I just have dry scalp or I just have, uh, you know, scalp buildup. This is, is some dandruff. <laughs> so <laughs> I had really itchy scalp. And I want to say that like in using this, like about 80 to 90 percent of that has gone where I don't even have to use it as often as I used to. Every now and again when I get my hair braided I do like to put this in here because it is a great moisturizer. It also has that uh, ZPT in it to kind of you know help me with the little you know the, the dandruff that might come through. But I really like this. <laughs> this is amazing. I love that it has the, the spout so that it's easy to kind of get in the scalp whether you have your hair braided up or not. And these are two of probably maybe um, almost 10 bottles that I've used up since this line came out maybe three years ago or so. I don't know, but that girl good. They also have a spray, which is also really great, but the spray I would say is more of like a on-demand kind of product, whereas this is more of like a maintenance product. Like the spray is good if you just got braids or you have some other type of hairstyle and it's maybe causing a little tension or a little itchiness and you can just kind of spray it on to kind of like soothe, soothe the area. Whereas this is like, you know, maintenance where you know you get the moisture, moisturize your scalp and everything. So I like the spray also, but I don't use the spray as much as I would use the scalp cream. I wasn't sure that I still wanted to film this video because I was like, are people gonna sit through an empties video? But then when I started seeing this bag starting to, to build up, I was like, girl, you gotta actually throw that stuff away. Like, you know, it's taking up space. And you know, we need our space to put <laughs> more things in the space. Anyway, follow me on social, the links will be in the description box. In the description box, I'll try to leave links to where you can buy some of this stuff. It's a lot of stuff to link, but I'll, I'll try my best to get it all underneath there. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.